Oh, hold up. Way. So, we were actually going to have a different video today, which is like episode 2 of the Spyro Acquisition, which we have a name for, we've got logos. I'll explain all that in tomorrow's video. It's already half scripted, I've got like half of all of the comments and tweets from people like Chadtronic all saved and all ready to be edited. But today, we had to stop production on that because today, something special happened. You see, Breath of the Wild has got a special version of Zelda, which has the Master Sword of Resurrection, or that's what they're calling it. And it's a nice little figure of the Master Sword. I actually really want the limited edition version for the Wii U more than anything. And I'm like, I want that sword. But it's only on Amazon.com. It doesn't actually exist on .co.uk. However, someone did say to me that game... Um, we It's called Game Station over here. But game might have it at my local store. Or at least you might be able to pre-order one, get hold of one at my local store. So, I went into town today. And by chance... Just by the slightest chance, not only could I actually speak to someone about the uh, Master Sword Resurrection, spoiler alert, it's not going to fucking happen, but they were also demoing the Nintendo Switch. We are now literally two weeks away from its launch, 14 days away from the Switch's launch, and GameStation got their hands on the demo the, the demo console, or they are demoing the console today. And they did say, I was like, oh, well, there is a line. How long does it take? And they said, well, each person that's going to demo it gets to demo three 1-2 Switch games and 10 minutes of Breath of the Wild. So you're looking at this queue, so he's going to be like 20 minutes, 20 minutes. So overall, you're going to be waiting about an hour and a half. Oh my, like, oh, that's okay. You know what? I'll, I'll wait the hour and a half because if I wait, it might take like till 2 o'clock in the afternoon or whatever, but at least I've got a video discussing the Switch and I can give my first impressions of the Switch. So I sat there and waited and as I was walking through the queue, I picked up a case because I didn't have my phone because obviously I didn't realise this was going to happen. But, you know, I picked up some game cases like uh, Halo and stuff and was just reading the back of the boxes to give myself something to do while I was waiting. However, it did get to my turn. And I'll just say, because 1-2 Switch, it has a lot of movement. Nobody was really too embarrassed except for one thing. But nobody was really too embarrassed because everybody was making themselves look like a bit of a fucking jackass with 1-2 Switch. But anyway, it got to my turn. And um, I got to hold the Switch. And... You pick up the, the joypad first, you know, you get to have a couple of goes lifting it in and out of the port so you can see it switch between the gamepad and the TV. And when it's got the screen inside of it, it is about the size of a Wii U gamepad, albeit a lot slimmer and more streamlined. And it does feel quite comfortable in your hands, you know, it is a lot like the Wii U gamepad, it's nice to hold. But the Joy-Cons, when they take the two handles off I guess that's what you'd call the joy cons when they take the two handles off the screen and put them in your hands they are like I, I, I can't even describe how small they are like I've got uh, a stick of RAM here that I've took out of an old laptop and I'd say it's it's just about a little bit bigger than this stick of RAM uh, I'll I'll take a picture of the RAM in my hand right now so you can see how big it is, you know, compared to a hand, and they're just a little bit bigger than the stick of RAM. I'd say, like, if I put these two sticks together, they're about that big. So I'll take a picture of that as well and put that on screen. So it's about that big. So you could see, if you were holding one, how big it is. And they are about as as wide so if you say like top to bottom it's about as tall as I showed you and in terms of width they are about as wide as the stick of RAM that you're seeing in this picture so they are they are like really tiny and I'm like bloody hell how do you hold these things but anyway 
Uh, the guy said that both of these games, now I'm assuming this is for the purposes of getting the queue moved a lot faster and, um, you know, basically streamlining the process. They said that both the games were installed into the hard drive. Like, there's no um, SD cartridge thing in the cartridge slot. It's just like, close the application, open Zelda. Close the application, open Switch. You know, they can swap between the two. So he says, you know, if Zelda, because it is a huge game, like it's a really big game. And he said, if Breath of the Wild runs a bit slower, that's why. Because I did ask them about that. Because everybody that's demoed the Zelda game has always said about frame rate issues. Like, oh, it runs, it runs poorly, it runs poorly, it runs worse than the Wii U. Apparently, that's why. Because all of the demo units have the Wii, uh, Breath of the Wild and the Switch 1-2 Switch thing installed directly onto the hard drive so it streamlines the demo process and they can get more people to go through it on a daily basis so if there is any kind of like slowdown it's not because it's like oh it's such a big game the switch can't handle it it's more it can't handle it physically from the drive but if the game was actually inserted into the sd card slot it might run a bit better do i believe that uh, I mean, obviously the PlayStation 4 and even the Wii U has emulators in it. And if you try and play something like Spyro the Dragon or Crash Bandicoot directly off the PSN emulating it, it is hardware, or sorry, it is software emulating hardware. Even if you download an emulator on your PC, it is software emulating hardware so it is bound to run a little bit slower so i'll give them a pass for the most part like when i play breath of the wild we'll come back to that because that's after one two switch but when i played played bleh, 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 when i played breath of the wild there was a little bit of a, a frame rate drop but I mean to the average consumer obviously I can tell whether it's running at 30 and 60 and to answer everybody's questions yes it wasn't running at 60 it is running at 30 but at the same time it looks stable enough that if you actually had the SD card in it probably would would I, I can't speak today it probably would run at 60 however we'll come back to Breath of the Wild, let's talk about 1-2 Switch. So it got to my turn, and they said you get to demo three games, and they ask you which three you want to demo. And I thought, right, what's the main thing that the Switch is banging on about? And I'll save that game for last, but it's like, what's the one thing the Switch is banging on about? The gimmicks, you know, the, the camera that reads the hand movements from that uh, presentation, and the H. D rumble you can feel the ice cubes in the glass you can feel them you can feel the ice cubes in the glass so obviously we had to play the games that tested out the gimmicks so the the employee also has a sex it's a two player or for the two player games like the milk one you can just pass the joy cons to each other but the uh, wild gunman obviously you need two players so i said i'll play wild gunman with you first to test the camera and flick your wrist up. So he's like, alright, well, we'll load up Wild Gunman. And, you know, he said, you stand this far apart. Because they've got some tape on the floor to tell you where to stand if you're playing certain games. So he's like, you stand on that piece of tape. I'll stand on this piece of tape. And you'll hear the countdown. Look directly at me. And he kind of said, like, keep your eyes on me. And hold your hand like this and get ready to, to flick when, when it says flick. So... I'm looking at this guy, and I'm waiting, waiting for the, the signal, and you flick it up, and obviously, he's been doing this all day, so he kicks my ass, like, all three rounds, because it's like, I've played this once, and he's been doing this all day, clearly, but you flick your wrist up, and it does read to a very accurate degree, I'll say that, like, when the, the match is over, and it comes up with, I'm using some of Nintendo's footage now, but when it comes up with these little time things here, it does read the times accurately. Like, you could even... Because he was even saying, do you want to stopwatch this to see how accurate it is to kind of show off the hardware? And I did use a stopwatch because, obviously, I want the full experience for the YouTube video. And if you press the stopwatch at the same time you're flicking it, 
it is pretty accurate. Like, the camera is, I mean, as stupid as it is to say, the camera is a lot, the tiny ass, this tiny ass camera is a lot more accurate than the Xbox Connect. Oh, we got this big fucking brick on top of your TV, and you can't, and you keep swiping your hand in something like Sonic Freeriders. You keep swiping your hand to change course, and it can't recognize a single hand swipe, but this tiny ass camera can recognize the speed of what you're flicking, the all your different hand movements, and obviously if you're playing the bloody eating baguette mini game. You can't cheat, you can't like, use your hand as your mouth, it does read the mouth, so the tiny ass camera is better than the Kinect camera, which is, is mind boggling and stupid, but anyway, I, I did the, the cowboy mini game and he beat me all three times, it does kill your wrist though, because he's been doing it all day and he's getting like three seconds, and I'm getting uh, about 4.8, sometimes I think the best one I got down to was... 3.8 but he's getting like 3 3.13 3. and to flick it in three seconds i want you to just do that right now let's all do an exercise together get like it can be anything it can be a tiny um it can be like a a bottle of water or just something small find yourself a small object around the size of what you think the joy con is just grab one now and get your hand at your hip just Get your hand at your hip, and now flick it up as fast as you can. And just do that like five times. Just flick it up as fast as you can like five times. So I'll, I'll, wait, for, I'll wait for a couple of seconds. Just do the exercise. Now, if you have just done that exercise, you will notice that your wrist is probably starting to hurt. Because obviously, when you flick your wrist up at such an incredible speed, it's, it's kind of like when you're driving a car and you crash into someone, you know. You know, like how you go forward and then back really quick, and that's how, like, whiplash occurs? Well, you're kind of whiplashing your hand. You're flicking it as high as you can, as fast as you can, and your wrists aren't built to do that. Like, you, your, your normal mortal wrists, your normal mortal bones are not, are not designed to flick that thing as fast as you can that many times. And remember... This is supposed to be a party game, so if you're flicking all day like that guy, I feel fucking sorry, he's probably gonna end up with carpal tunnel syndrome. I mean, granted, they probably swap the employee out every hour, and it's like, oh, Jeff's, Jeff's hands aching, so switch to Bob, or, you know, whatever the employee's names are, they probably switch him out every hour. But Jesus, if he's been doing, if everybody, if every single person wants to play Wild Gunman Shoot minigame, that guy's gonna have a sore wrist at the end of the day. Like, it was kind of like, man, I've done this five times. Sorry, six, because it's best out of three. I've done this six times, and it's already like, this is, this is kind of sore. I don't want to flick my wrist anymore, because your wrist isn't designed to go that fast, so... In terms of stamina, I don't think this is, like, the best idea for a party game. So we'll move on. And it's like, right, which one are we going to move on to? Well, I'm going to look like a bit of a dick. But let's let's try it. Let's do the milking game. So, it's like, right, you've got to milk the cow. And you've got the tiny SR and LR buttons that you have to press in as you're squeezing. These things, I can't even describe how small they are. Like, you've, see, you've probably seen them in but in videos. Like, you've seen them in the Nintendo Switch presentation. You've probably seen them in other Nintendo commercials. Like, you've probably seen the tiny SR buttons. But the SR and LR, or LR and left, left trigger, right trigger, the tiny buttons on the inside. They're like a screw. They're slightly bigger than a screw, like... I can't describe the tininess of them. There's nothing in my room right now that can describe how tiny the SR and LR buttons are. Like, is it a key on the on the keyboard? Nah, the key on the keyboard's bigger than these buttons. Is it? Is it? Is it the size of of your earphone, your iPhone earphone? Nah, even that's too big. Like these things are absolutely goddamn tiny. And I was kind of scared holding it because he's like. Oh, you press these buttons in as you squeeze the others and you pull the thing down. And I, I was pressing them. 
I'm like, the, it's like an ant. I'm going to crush this button. Like, if I squeeze it, like he's telling me, it feels so tiny. I feel like I'm just going to just go and just crush this thing in my hand. Look, my, my dragon strength will turn these tiny little buttons to dust. So, uh... So yeah, that's not the best in the world. Like, why the buttons are that tiny, I don't know. They are quite durable, though. You will think you're going to break them. Because you're like, oh god, they're so tiny. But obviously, I played the mini game, and as I was squeezing the udder and constantly pressing them in, while you still think they're going to break, they are quite resilient and they won't break. But Jesus, they are, they are so tiny. And again, it's I use my right arm for everything. So just keep in mind, I flick the gun six times, so my wrist getting sore. Now you've got the the milking game, and as you can see, I put the Nintendo footage up again. You have to put your hand upwards, squeeze as you push, pressing down, and then move your hand back up. So basically, like you're jerking off. Just just imagine, just imagine you're pounding it, but a lot slower. So it's kind of like. Like that, nice and slow. And if you are a bit of a sexual deviant and you pound it, well, yeah, your arm gets sore from making the jerking motion. Going up and down, your entire elbow area or your tricep, whatever it's called, I'm, I'm not a bodybuilder, but your tricep gets sore. So now you've got a sore wrist from flicking the gun and now you're having to milk like 12 glasses and we did it three times again best out of three we did 12 glasses every or i did 12 glasses that guy got like 15 but i did 12 glasses every time so 12 times 3 36 jerk off 36 times so now i've got a sore wrist and a sore arm so i'm like ah oh, why you got because remember you're trying to beat your opponent it is a party game you're trying to outdo your opponent so, he's getting 14 glasses and I'm getting 12, but I need to get like 16, so I need to, I need to milk this thing fast, I can't just be like, oh, let's just test it, I can't just be like, one glass, two glass, three glass, I've got to be like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve glasses, I've got to pump them glasses of milk out really fast, so I'm here jerking off as fast as I can, trying to pump out enough glasses to beat the guy, and my arm's getting sore, my wrist's already sore from the fucking gunman game, and I've got to squeeze the little triggers for my fingers, I'm like, my arm is fucking dead, I've played like three rounds of trying to jerk this bloody cow off so fast to get more glasses than this guy, and my arm is goddamn dead, and... You're supposed to play all 28 mini games. Oh, it's it's a three hour long party. Oh, it's it's a teenage party. We're up all night, boys. Joy-Con boys, up all night. You're supposed to play all 28 mini games in one night. You're supposed to play all 28 in one night. You wouldn't last 10. Your arms would be dead after 10. Especially if you're trying to outrace your opponents. You, you're going, oh, milk as many glasses as you can. Then your other guy's going, I'm going to milk more glasses. Then you got to go even faster. Then he's going fast. You, you're going to have an absolutely dead arm. It's, it's not the best party game in the world. So, with a dead arm, I'm like, right, let's, let's slow it down and try the HD rumble. We're going to play Safe Cracker, which is where you get one of the Joy-Cons and you hold it in your hand uh, horizontally and in the on the screen and this is one way you have to look at the screen so Nintendo are kind of lying some of the mini games you do have to look directly at the screen but in front of you is uh, a safe dial you know it's it's kind of like that safe in Banjo-Kazooie and you see the thing in the middle of the safe like the, the twisty knob thing it's kind of like that you get this little safe dial and, um, you know, like when in video games, like Sly Cooper, he puts his ear to the safe and then he turns the dial and you hear the ticking. Well, in this case, the HD rumble makes it feel like there's three balls. And I'll get into how the HD rumble feels in a minute, but it makes it feel like there's three balls in the Joy-Con. And as you tilt the Joy-Con, the, the dial turns and when it starts to vibrate at a certain point, that means that you've got that number correct. So now you have to tilt your hand back the other way to, to start 
turning the dial the other way and you have to like tilt it left and right in order to to get the combination so you you have to be and remember you're still racing against your opponent so you might be trying to turn it really slow like uh uh or I can feel a little bit of vibration. Uh, oh, there's a lot of vibration. Now turn it the other way. And the other guy might be just going full force like, turn it, turn it. Oh, there's the vibration. Turn it, turn it back. So you're still in a race because it's a party game. You're still in a race to beat your opponent. So you gotta, you got to twist this thing back and forth really quickly. Uh, it's, that one's not as bad because it is just slight movements. Because obviously if you go too fast, you go past the number you're looking for and then you just throw yourself completely off but um that one's not too bad so you could probably get through that one with a minimal arm arm strain but now comes where i talk about the hd rumble because that's hd rumble you can feel the ice you can feel them in the glass how many ice cubes are in the glass is it one ice cube is it two ice is it three ice is it ice cubes with water you can feel it HD rumble, you can feel it. it vibrates more. It vibrates more. Basically, from what I can feel, and and probably someone is texting me. Who is texting me? It's O2. Is just telling me that I need to top up because I've got no credit in my phone. But anyway, um, from what I can tell, it's got three separate vibrators in it. You know, like with a PlayStation controller or like an N64 controller if you use the rumble pack, it has one big vibrating item in it and that makes the whole controller vibrate. So if there's ever an explosion, the vibrator in the middle just kind of like ripples out to the two handles that you're holding so the whole controller vibrates. Well, it feels like inside of it is three separate vibrators and just say I tilted it all the way to the left, well, the leftmost vibrator would vibrate and the other two would stay normal because it's trying to to imitate the balls inside of the safe cylinder. Like, oh, the ball has rotated to the far left, so only the far left vibrator's vibrating. And then as you're tilting it one way, like, the one on the far left will be fully vibrating, the one in the middle will be medium vibrate, and the one on the end will be low vibrate and the way you tilt it back and forth the v three vibrators will vibrate at different powers at different times and then like depending on what else is going on the vibrators will vibrate at different intensities so again like an explosion you might have all three vibrating at the lowest capacity or the highest capacity but if you're sneaking round if you're sneaking round a corner to find someone all three might just be vibrating very slowly. Or if there's a guy right in front of you, only the middle one will be vibrating in front of you. So rather than one vibrator, it's got three vibrators in it. So it's you can't feel the ice cubes in the glass. It's just got three separate vibrators that vibrate at different points to make it... Oh, is the one ice cube? And now I understand the ice cubes in the glass. Is the one ice cube in the glass? Yeah, because only the bottom one's vibrating. Is the two ice cubes in the glass? Well, yes, because the bottom vibrator and the middle vibrator are vibrating. Is the three ice cubes in the glass? Yes, because all three ice cubes are... Or all three vibrators are vibrating. So it's got three vibrators in there. So, um... Yeah, and I mean, in terms of HD, like, can you feel the ice cubes in the glass? No, it just vibrates at different points. Like, the guy was saying to me when he was explaining how the game works, you've got to feel where the ball rolls. It doesn't feel spherical. It, doesn't, it kind of feels like the vibration is moving up and down the three of them, but it doesn't feel like a ball. The ball is not rolling back and forth. It doesn't feel like a ball. It doesn't feel like ice cubes in the glass. It just feels like the vibration is moving from vibrator 1 to vibrator 3, or from vibrator 2 to vibrator 1. So, yeah. HD rumble, it, it's just three vibrators. It vibrates more. It's not that HD. It really is. It's not that HD. It just, it just vibrates more. So, uh, yeah. If, if anybody ever says... Oh, HD vibration, HD vi no, it, it, HD rumble, HD rumble. No, it, it just vibrates more. It's got three vibrators in it that can vibrate at different times. It, it just vibrates more. And, and the, 
the mo how many times I've said vibrator, I'm probably now sponsored by Bad Dragon Dildos. Buy a Bad Dragon Vibrator today. Each one of them has HD, has HD rumble. Feel Duke's HD rumble inside of you. Anyway, after that, uh, I got quickly shoved on to 10 minutes of Breath of the Wild. And again, it did run at 30 frames per second, but it was running smoothly. Like, there was no um, issues. Whereas some people have said, like, oh, the game really stutter. No, it, it don't really stutter. It does run smoothly, but it do it would really benefit from seeing it in 60 FPS. Like, I would like to see this at 60 because at 30... It doesn't look too bad, too good. General people won't notice the difference, but from someone that has a 4K monitor and, you know, has to know the difference between 30 and 60, it, do it doesn't look too good at 30. And I think the Wii U version is also going to run at 30 as well. So, yeah, 30, it's not too good, but it shouldn't really dampen the experience because what of the experience? Well, again, to save time, to keep the queue moving, they have skipped the opening cutscene. You know, you don't start in the Chamber of Resurrection or wherever it is. They uh, saved the game outside the Chamber of Resurrection to let you run around the world for 10 minutes and just, like, see the sights and maybe fight a couple of monsters and see the weapon degradation. And if you can find it, but it's slightly far away so you might not make it in time, have a go at cooking. I couldn't get to the cooking thing, but I did see people um, doing the cooking thing. And it does seem like you have to shake if you're playing the Switch version. It does seem like you have to shake. Only very slightly. It's not as ridiculous as the Wii U where it'd have you swinging it all over. But when you're cooking, you do have to shake the uh, pad very slightly to make the food fly out the frying pan and back in the frying pan. But I didn't get to the cooking. I just kind of walked around, picked up a stick and swung stuff. And it is good. It is really good. Like, I... If I decided to get a Switch, but there are a lot of things about the Switch, like, I wouldn't consider 1-2 Switch worth the full $60 asking price whatsoever. Uh, I, I honestly don't even think it's worth half price. It's like, tw it is honestly a $20, a £20 tie-in game that's, that's nowhere near. Nobody, anybody that played that demo, and I, I could tell from some of the faces that when people had played their time, from some of those faces, people were hyped as shit for Breath of the Wild, but when they were playing 1-2 Switch, everybody was kind of like, this kind of sucks, so... Anybody that is getting a Switch, I don't think they're going to buy 1-2 Switch. Not at full price. 1-2 Switch is, is dead. I'm going to tell you that right now. That's, that thing's dead. It's not worth full price. It's probably not even worth half price. It should have been a tie-in game. And from the faces, everybody's going to skip that for Breath of the Wild. Especially because, again, it is a $300 system. So you're paying $300, and then you got to pay an extra $60 on top of that for a game. And $360 is a lot of money. So what would you rather have? Uh, $360 for the Switch. And Breath of the Wild. Giant open world. Skyrim. You can do all this stuff. Or $300. And then an extra $60 for a couple party games that hurts your arm. And you kind of thought, well this kind of sucked. Obviously you're going to go with the Skyrim game. So... No one is going to go with the 1-2 uh, the Switch. But in terms of Breath of the Wild, it looks amazing. They they had a 1080 TV. Obviously, it is a GameStop. They don't have 4K monitors or 4K TVs. It was in 1080. And it was in 1080. This 720 thing, I can disband that right now. The um, handheld part, when you pull it out of the docking station... The handheld part is in 720, which it was always going to be. You can't cram 1080 into that little thing. But if you're playing it on a TV, TVs do play it at 1080. So, it's, it looks gorgeous. It looks fucking beautiful. It looks so goddamn nice and sounds goddamn nice as well. The music that I was hearing when I was walking around the Great Plateau. Mmm, good shit. Like, that's, that's probably going to be... I imagine... If we see all the areas, or when we see all the areas, like Lake Hylia and Death Mountain, I'm going to imagine people are going to be like, ooh, that Zelda soundtrack, 
That's up there with Majora's Mask. That shit is like top Zelda. That's up there with Wind Waker. That's like top Zelda soundtrack. I mean, obviously, I've only heard like three. But like Mario Galaxy, some of them are an orchestral score. So they have gone... They have put a lot of effort into this. They've gone all out on it. Uh, as for the controls themselves, they're pretty standard. You know, Link walks around with the, the left stick. You can move the camera with the right stick. Um, your A button swings your sword and you've got like your other buttons that can um, use your, your items which are all kind of attached to the iPhone. It's kind of weird to explain because if you want a bomb, like you've got your iPhone, but your iPhone kind of transforms like you might have seen it in the trailers so you know like when you get the magnet and you've seen in trailers where you lift up all of those ice cubes and shit out of the water or you move metal platforms that's still your iphone so like um you can have two two functions equipped to your iphone so let's just say bomb and arrow i mean the arrows are, are like a bow they're their own separate thing but let's just say bomb and magnet thing right and when you use the bomb, you, you kind of like, your iPhone turns into the bomb and then it rolls. Or when you're using the magnet thing to lift the, little, the metal plates, your iPhone like kind of extends in your hands into the, the metal magnet thing that you lift it up with. So it's all attached to the iPhone. So you don't really need to um, constantly go into the menus and swap all your items around. It just kind of like change the setting on the iPhone. With, with only playing it for 10 minutes, I didn't really get to experience that much. I just kind of made two bombs to throw at an enemy camp. I was more going into uh, chests. I found a wooden sword, which I got to hit around. And then I stole one of the goblins. Uh, it was like a skull... A, a skull... I wouldn't say a skull hammer, skull club thing. And I hit that around. And then right near the end, I did find a metal sword. And I can get to say about the weapon degradation. Uh, if you've got anything that isn't metal, it's shit. Like, the wooden sword broke within two or three enemies. It was garbage. And same for the bone club. Like, oh, it's an enemy bone club. Yeah, but the enemies, they're level one enemies. They're shit. So if you pick up a bone club, two or three enemies, that shit's shattered. It's garbage. But I found a metal sword, and the degradation didn't seem to go down as quick so i don't think i mind that too much uh obviously the stamina meters come back from skyward sword it does seem a lot more improved like uh skyrim rather than just being 12 little cheese slices in a circle which you can tell they're going down nearly straight away it's more of a skyrim bar that slowly decreases depending on whether you use light or heavy attacks all the enemies are really easy to kill it's, when i say light and heavy attacks it's not like for honor where it's like use a heavy attack to break the enemy block and shit no no, no. it's it just depends how much stamina you're going to use whether you want to do a heavy attack for more damage but use up all your stamina so you might not be able to run away or use a light attack which will only use a little bit of stamina and obviously if shit goes tits up you can run away so light and heavy attacks just just are attached to the stamina meter it's not for honor you've got to decide whether a heavy attack breaks guards and shit there's none of that but overall it was good and i, I am excited for breath of the wild and and overall would it convince me to buy a switch with those that i mean it's certainly like a, a lot of those sad faces i was seeing it certainly would not encourage me to buy one to switch i could not re there is nothing under the sun that could get me to recommend one to switch at full price or even half price it should have been a tie-in game it's a series of mini games and people are gonna either get sore arms or wrists or get really bored with it really because it's not like we sports you know like how we sports it was kind of fun because like with the bowling you kind of roll the ball but you could kind of put a spin on it and there was that um there was that little challenge section of wee bowling where it's like you gotta get it over this barrier or you gotta get it around this barrier so you know like how there was a little bit of a challenge area and it was kind of fun for wee sports and there was like platinum medals like oh you you beat all 20 challenge alleys in wee bowling you got the platinum medal oh my god you knocked over a thousand points worth of pins you get the gold medal in the bowling or you knocked out every opponent without taking a hit, including Mike Tyson champion, you get the gold medal. 
Well, there's no medals in one two switch. There's there's nothing. There's no there's no scoreboard. There's no medals. So there's nothing worth gunning for. You can't show off to all your friends like, oh hey guys, look, I got a go I got the gold in milking. There's no there's no gold. So it's it's less than Wii Sports. So yeah, it definitely should have been a tying game. And there's there's no fucking way I could re recommend that at all. But that's that's my first impressions of the Switch. It didn't convince me to buy one two switch. It certainly convinced me to buy buy Breath of the Wild, and that's looking good. In terms of all that day one DLC bollocks, that's going to be in a video tomorrow. I'm going to do a full analysis of the day one DLC, but it certainly has reassured me about Breath of the Wild. That's looking top. Breath of the Wild's looking top shit. Would I get a switch overall? Did it? Has it convinced me to be like, dude, get get switch. It's it's good price. It's good to get switch. Not a three, not a three hundred dollars. Like or two hundred and seventy five pounds is what it's going for in game. Two hundred and seventy five pounds, three hundred dollars. As what it is right now, with only Breath of the Wild as its launch title, because again, nobody's gonna like one two switch. With only Breath of the Wild as a launch title. Um, with it not having a lot of the features at launch, like it's not going to have the online till uh, a, next month in April. Um, it's not got any share functionality as of yet. It's not got any streaming functionality as of yet. You need a smartphone to go online. As it stands at launch for $300, it's not worth it. If, In my opinion, I would probably, I mean, I might have to get it for review but if i was not a reviewer and i was just a general consumer it's it's got no value to it like oh yeah it's it's got some nice shit don't get me wrong it's got some nice shit but once you've got breath of the wild that's it you you're stuck you're going to be stuck for months on end with no online. Splatoon 2 is not coming out till later on this year. Mario Odyssey is not coming out till later this year. The online feature is not coming out till the summer. Or there's a demo in the summer and the full paid for version comes in the fall. Um, the streaming functionality to stream to Twitch isn't coming out till later this year. The share feature only lets you allow upload pictures right now and not videos. There's too much shit missing in my opinion. It's an unfinished console. They should have just held it off and waited till closer to Christmas when you've got Splatoon and Mario and the online and all the other shit ready to go. Ready to go. It feels really unfinished and I, I can't recommend one at launch. So I, again, if I wasn't a reviewer, I definitely would not buy one at launch. I, it's going to be hard, I'm going to be honest. Even like as a reviewer, it's going to be hard to convince me to buy one at launch because I, I really don't want to it's it's not worth the the it's not worth what they're asking at launch it's missing a lot of shit and it needs to get all that shit in before it's got the value that is required to drop three hundred dollars on the thing so for now that's my first impressions uh there'll probably be a full review of of them if i do get them uh, but for now, just just stick to the Wii U. If you're wanting Breath of the Wild, don't just go drop 300 on a Switch for Breath of the Wild. Just get it on the Wii U. It's it's probably going to be $60 on the Wii U, and you'll still have fun with it on the Wii U. And if you get countless hours out of the Wii U version, those countless hours will tide you over till the Switch has got all of its features and games fully implemented. But for now, thank you all for listening to me ramble for like upwards of an hour um, or 38 minutes. Apparently that was not as long as I thought. But thank you for listening to me ramble for 30 minutes. Uh, if you did indeed enjoy my first impressions of the Switch while I was demoing it with everybody else, then uh, do feel free to leave a like down below. It does help out. Tell me if you have got a GameStop, GameStation, Game, a EB Games... Uh, Granger Games, if you've got some sort of game distribution shop near you, has the Switch come to that shop? Or maybe you went to E3, maybe you went to the London MCM Expo. Have you demoed the Switch? So do tell me down below. If you have managed to demo the Switch, whether it be 
at a convention or in a local game store. What did you think of it? Did it convince you to get it? Because aside from Breath of the Wild, which I'll buy on Wii U, it's it's not convinced me to drop 300. I'd certainly get it, but not, not at launch. It's not ready at launch. But tell me what you think if you manage to get hold of it. And uh, of course, we will be having the full... Uh, Spyro Acquisition journalistic look at the day one DLC for Breath of the Wild tomorrow. So if you don't want to miss that or any other videos, do feel free to subscribe. And there are links down below to my DeviantArt on Twitter if you want to see what I'm doing right now. And of course, there is a link to my Patreon if you'd like to go that extra mile. But of course, you don't have to. And thank you all for watching, and I will see all of you in the next one. And then we've got this little extra bit at the end here. So as you may have saw while I was rambling off, I have quit the game, restarted the game, gone in and out the room. I hurt myself with the blood bag and I'm trying to get to the void. But for whatever reason, even though the void portal, even though I've beat Hush and the void portal is right there, it won't let me in. So anybody in the comments, can you can you tell me what I did wrong? Edmund, Tyrone, fucking me in the butt again, I see. Can you tell me what I did wrong? I was confident that I could beat Delirium with this Lazarus run. Can you can you explain why the void is not working? Can any of you please, in the comments, explain why the void's not working? Because I really don't want to have this happen again. And obviously, after about ten minutes of trying to get into the void and uh, failing this was where the run ended i quit the game i did the daily i'm doing quite well on the dailies i've won four in a row so if i can win tomorrow's daily or today's now it's 20 past midnight but if i can win uh today's daily when i wake up in the morning we should be able to unlock the cracked crown at least then we just got to do the 31 dailies in a row for dedication but yeah so uh, this is where the run ended please tell me what i did wrong because i'm kind of annoyed that I had a potential chance to beat Delirium with Lazarus and it never happened. But for now, again, thank you all for listening to me ramble on about the Switch. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and tell me all your thoughts if you've managed to play one. But I, I've said all my stuff. So for now, thank you all for watching. And I will see all of you in the next video. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you. A vision softly creeping Left it seems while I was sleeping And the vision that was planted in my brain